corner of the area to lower the barrier in front of the eye switch, then shoot the arrow orbs to solve the puzzle. The will be able to plow through and you can just simply sneak up behind them and stab them in the back so that you can have her switch bodies with them. You can continue solving this puzzle in the middle, but real quick, let's go get some treasure. Take Zelda out into the previous area, and at the bottom left corner of the map there is a treasure chest that we couldn't access before. Have her pull back this giant block, then circle around with Link and open the chest. To make this easier, you can have Zelda possess one of the other phantoms out here so that you have one less to deal with. These two switches in the top left corner can be held down by one of the bigger blocks. This is good because we have a very limited supply of these smaller blocks. Get the smaller one out of the way, then have Zelda steadily push and pull the big block to get it to the top left corner. Meanwhile, you can have Link pushing one of these smaller blocks to the south.
Once you're done there, you want to have Zelda join you in the southwest corner and use her to pull back this big block to get it out of the way, then have Link push the smaller block onto the switch. Alternatively, you could have Link push it and pull it, the small block, through the narrow path. That requires quite a few more steps. Finally push the remaining small block all the way to the top right corner where there are two switches. We can't get a big block back here obviously, but we can press down one switch. The remaining switch can be held down by Zelda. You only need to have them pressed down temporarily anyway, and we need Link free to go open the chest. There are some slight variations on how you could have solved all of these, such as having Zelda stand on a different switch or getting to the bottom right corner pressed down by moving the blocks in a slightly different way, but this is the quickest and easiest way that I found to solve all of these. The chest we unlock contains a small key that can be used one floor up. I'm going to go gather our armored companion and then go up the stairs in the middle.
There's still those two treasure chests on this floor that I mentioned earlier, but we can't get to them just yet. You want to open the locked door and go up the stairs. that we can't ride on her shield. Oddly enough, you actually can jump on Zelda's shield with this type of phantom, but as soon as you draw a path with her, she'll just roll every time, which makes you fall off. Kind of weird, since when she's following you, she walks, but when you draw a path, she rolls. I think it would have made more sense if she just, with this type of phantom, she just rolls all the time, maybe didn't even have a sword and shield, but instead just looked bulkier, maybe a big fist or something, I don't know. But I can understand the increased development time that would have taken for something so nifty. It's honestly not that important, but oh well. Follow the only path which leads to the far south where you'll find some stairs leading up the floor. In this room, I recommend against the urge to destroy the blocks, and we'll soon discover why here in a moment. This first part is pretty easy with our giant quiver, especially these Stalfos can be defeated in just a few quick shots. Just be ready to either dodge or block their bones if they toss them at you. These Geozards are pretty easy now that we can take away their shield with our whip. However, having several of them come at us at once is troubling, though. You can use Zelda to draw a bunch of circles, and they always follow you, so you can lead the Geozards into her path where they'll die very quickly. If she's continually circling around, then she'll hit them repeatedly. The only catch with this whole thing is that rats will occasionally appear out of the walls to the far north, which makes using your Phantom Companion somewhat unpredictable. Because if she gets stuck with a rat, then you're suddenly stuck with all the other enemies, and it's really frustrating.
other thing to watch out for is to either be in the middle or the very bottom right corner of the map once you defeat the last enemy in this room, and that'll make sense here in a little bit. So once you've finished off the last enemy, a regular phantom will appear in each corner. So if you're standing in the middle, they won't see you when they patrol around, but if they do see you, it's much easier to lure them around if you have the blocks in the way, which is why I recommended against destroying them earlier. But the one part of this that makes it really hard is if Zelda gets stuck with a rat near her because she can't possess another phantom until you've saved her. So you have to sneak past the phantoms and then go save her and then run all the way back to the safe zone. So if that happens, you're probably best luring all the phantoms to the bottom right corner, then waiting for them to leave, and as they're all going away, you can then rescue the princess and then claim the phantom. Now you can just run away and just attack a phantom, but it may be easier to simply use Zelda's record phantom to plow through a whole bunch of them and stun them all at once. At this point, you can continue on, but if you'd like to get some extra optional treasure, follow me to the right, hit the crystal switch here to stop the boulders, then circle around and go down the stairs. We can only do one of them before because we needed a regular phantom. Now that we have one, it's time to go get those chests. First have Zelda stand here, then go to the top right corner of the map and grab the arrow orb off the platform and bring it back. Set the arrow orb on the ground and draw a path from Zelda to the orb. With this type of phantom, she can pick it up and walk around with it. Go have her stand near the door on the left. With Link, go stand on the floor switch on the platform, which opens the door. Have Zelda go stand on the mark on the floor in the next room, then use the boomerang to redirect both of the nearby arrow orbs so that they're facing north towards the two eye switches. Make sure you have Zelda come back to this side before you step off the switch, otherwise you're locking her in there. It doesn't really matter much, as you'll see, because we're going to need to switch her phantom again. Next, go open the chest to claim your treasure. So before we leave, we're going to need to change phantoms again. You want to go to the bottom right corner of the map and capture the record phantom here. With that, go back up the stairs in the middle to return to the middle room with the boulders. Although Zelda can push forward with a regular phantom, these ones are coming too fast so she won't really make any progress. You'll need a record phantom to get through this hallway with anything resembling speed. Unfortunately, this also means we're going to need a regular phantom once we get past this obstacle. So go back south, go back up the stairs, claim another one, then return here. Which is kind of tedious, but it's a lot of free money. Alright, back here at long last. There's this eye switch on the right, which we obviously want to hit. It's one of our goals. We want to have Zelda go walk into the lava, then hop on her shield, and if she's a regular phantom, you should be able to have her move around while doing this. Go back onto dry land and go to the far north on your left to see some of those logs that are we're now tall enough to reach. You want to whip across them to reach the higher platform on the left where there is an arrow orb. You want to have Zelda walk through the lava and go just below this platform, then pick up the arrow orb with Link and hop onto her shield. Then have her walk as far south as possible so you can get on top of this platform on the bottom right. At the top of this area, you'll notice that there are two symbols on the floor. You want to place the orb on either one of them, just make sure it's facing to the right so it's pointing towards the ice which we saw earlier. Next, have Zelda take you back to the vlog so that you can reach that higher platform again. Alright, now move Zelda to the far left side of the room. Unfortunately, because this path is somewhat near that other orb that we just placed, it may lock onto it, so sometimes you have to do this repeatedly, and other times it's not an issue at all, but try and circle around it and go to the very far left where there is another arrow orb on a platform near the stairs. You 
Once you've grabbed it, have Zelda stand on the southern left platform on top of the symbols on the floor. Use the boomerang to rotate the arrow orb until it's facing left. At long last, shoot the orb on the right to temporarily remove the barrier on the left. Then shoot the other orb to hit the eye switch, which unlocks the door. Enjoy total unlimited data and zero usage caps with fast, reliable fiber broadband from... out of the woods just yet. Unfortunately, you cannot jump on Zelda's shield while she's holding something, and there isn't a way to, like, order her to drop the orb. You want to move both of your characters to the far right by drawing a path with Zelda, and then having Link use the logs to get back to solid land. Once they're both arrived, simply hit Zelda with your sword or one of your other items to make her drop the orb. Now you can get on her shield.
near the stairs. Once you've grabbed it, have Zelda stand on the southern left platform on top of the symbols on the floor. Use the boomerang to rotate the arrow orb until it's facing left. At long last, shoot the orb on the right to temporarily remove the barrier on the left. Then shoot the other orb to hit the eye switch, which unlocks the door. Once they're both arrived, simply hit Zelda with your sword or one of your other items to make her drop the orb. Now you can get on her shield. Okay, so Zelda can't walk on sand, and Link can't walk through fire, so send Zelda through the fire to the north and circle around to meet her. Stock up on arrows here, then send Zelda through the flames to pick up the electrified key. This means that we can't pick up that key with Link at all. And as we've come to expect though, this thing causes the key masters to appear, and it's a little more complex to keep them away from the princess than a lot of puzzles we've done before. For this first part, I recommend you just have Zelda following you. You can just take out the key masters with many different weapons, but the bow is probably the most effective one yet. It's ranged, it's very quick, and it only takes two hits. At this corner, quickly move Zelda north before this one reappears, otherwise you'll spawn right on top of you and you'll lose your key that way. This is the hard part. You want to position Link just past the sand, and there's basically three ways to do this. The first is to kill the key masters, and then have Zelda race to the end, which is effective, but they could reappear in the midst of this. 
so that's kind of scary. The second idea is to switch back and forth between Zelda and Link. You want to issue way forward once you kill the first one, and then kill the second one, and then go have her go forward for the final stretch. This is probably the most time-consuming method, uh, but I also think it's the most dangerous because they could reappear on top of you, but also, if you move too close to the second one, then it will start coming after you before you're ready, so that's also kind of scary as well. Now, the third method, which is what I did here, is to draw a path for Zelda ahead of time, and as you saw me here, I actually made her path to zigzag back and forth initially so that she took a longer path. This gave me more time to shoot them. I think this is overall the easiest, but you may want to wait until the one that's patrolling on the left side is moving away from her before you set down your wind-up toy. but they could reappear in the midst of this, so that's kind of scary. The second idea is to switch back and forth between Zelda and Link. You want to issue way forward once you kill the first one, then kill the second one, and then go have her go forward for the final stretch. This is probably the most time-consuming method, um, but I also think it's the most dangerous because they could reappear on top of you, but also, if you move too close to the second one, then it will start coming after you before you're ready, so that's also kind of scary as well. Now the third method, which is what I did here, is to draw a path for Zelda ahead of time, and as you saw me here, I actually made her path to zig the north before this one reappears, otherwise you'll spawn right on top of you and you'll lose your key that way. This is the hard part. When a position link just past the sand, and there's basically three ways to do this. The first is to kill the key masters and then have Zelda race to the end, which is effective, but they could reappear in the midst of this, so that's kind of scary. The second idea...